Good morning, and welcome to Amprius Technologies Extreme Fast Charge Demonstration. All participants are in a listen-only mode as our event is being recorded. During this event, Amprius's CTO, Dr. Ianel Stefan, will demonstrate our Extreme Fast Charge Power Cell, which has 370 watt hours per kilogram and is capable of charging from zero to 80% in approximately six minutes. It should be noted that the charge time for our battery being shown today has been previously verified by a third party testing facility. A Q&A session with Dr. Stefan, CEO Dr. Kang Sun and COO John Bornstein will follow this demonstration. You may submit your questions in writing in the Q&A section at any time. Please note that this presentation contains forward-looking statements. These statements are based on Amprius's technology, business, and expected market opportunities, and are subject to uncertainty and changes in circumstance, many of which are beyond Amprius's control, which may cause actual results to differ materially from those expressed or implied in such forward-looking statements. For a more complete discussion on forward-looking statements and the uncertainties related to Amprius's technology, business, and expected market opportunities, please refer to its filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission, including the discussion of Amprius's risk factors in its 8K filed on September 16, 2022. I will now turn the event over to Amprius's CTO, Dr. Ian L. Stefan. Hello, I'm Dr. Ionel Stefan, Chief Technology Officer of Amprius Technologies, and I'm here at our test lab in Fremont, California. I started at Amprius in 2009, just as the company was founded, as part of the team that set up the first laboratory and tested silicon nanoware materials as lithium-ion battery anode. The idea originating from Professor Ishii lab at Stanford University was that silicon nanowire materials that are directly connected to the current collector foils will be able to avoid the fate of silicon particle anodes, which, when cycled, lost connection to each other and thus lost electrical connection and become inactive. In contrast, each silicon nanowire is directly connected to the current collector and does not need to connect to anything else to stay in electrical contact. The connection to the foil is not a simple contact and is not made by binders or additive materials or any other gluing materials. It is similar to a connection made by welding that is strong and a very low electrical resistance. This low electrical resistance combined with the high capacity of silicon, undiluted by any binder or conductive additives, are properties that have allowed us to develop cells that exceed the current generation of graphite cells by anywhere between 50 and 100% depending on size and shape. This jump in energy density is roughly equivalent to the entire progress of the graphite lithium ion technology since the, its inception in 1990. It's a technology step change. What is also remarkable is that the high energy density cells have a very high power capability as well, including high power acceptance during charging. This is what we are going to show today a cell with extreme fast charge capability of under 10 minutes to 80% state of charge that still has a high energy density of 370 watt hour per kilogram. That is over 50% higher than uh, higher energy density than the current generation of graphite cells, which typically can be charged in no less than 30 minutes to 80%. This cell, which I'm showing here, has a capacity of uh, 2.8 ampere hour, so it's a real uh, cell capacity usable in, uh, in multiple applications. Weights 28 grams, and it's capable of accepting a current charging of um, 28 ampere, or a power of 120 watt. So this is a cap capable of taking a charging power of 120 watt at, uh, at its peak. So, we have a similar cell already connected in this uh, chamber, uh, set at 22 degrees C. Uh, we, you see the charging wires. Uh, they are coming from this Arbin tester, and it's, uh, that's capable of delivering 50 ampere of uh, current at uh, its peak. And uh, we also attach a, a thermocouple to the cell body so that we can measure 
the, the temperature during charging. So I'm going to start the test. And uh, we can monitor the, the charge and this uh, interface. It's already at 2% in uh, a little bit under 10 seconds. Uh, in this interface, we have um, uh, two charts, one showing the state of charge over time and one showing the voltage, current versus time. So you can see that the state of charge already exceeded 5% in less than 30 seconds. And um, on the voltage current chart, uh, we have 30 seconds at uh, about 23, uh, which is 8C charge rate. And then after 30 seconds, uh, we switch to the highest charge rate of 28 um, ampere, which are delivered now uh, at a constant current uh, stage. So that's in, uh, in about a minute, it's reaching almost 15%. Temperature of the cell started to increase to about uh, 40 degree. And uh, we expect that uh, in, a, in normal operation of an EV cell, uh, cells are actually preconditioned to a, a slightly higher temperature, uh, about uh, in this range in 40 to 50 degrees C. They are also uh, conditioned so that they don't cool down uh, after a while. So the results we are seeing here are a direct result of a unique material structure. Typically, electrodes are made of layers of particles coated from semi-liquid slurries, dried and pressed. The diffusion of electrolyte and ions in a particle electrode layer is slow due to its high tortuosity, which is the really convoluted path that the liquid has to take to penetrate the layer. In contrast, the silicon nanowire anode has relatively straight and open pores, which leads to very fast diffusion. Moreover, due to its high energy density, the silicon layer is only about one third to about one half thick as the graphite layer. So the silicon layer is thin with open and straight pores compared to a thick, long, and convoluted pore structure in particle electrodes. This open pore structure is key to extreme fast charge capability. The high energy density combined with the high power and fast charge capability demonstrated by the silicon nanowire technology represent a step change in lithium technology that will enable new markets. The lithium Ion technology itself was a step change in battery technology that led to the mobile consumer electronic revolution, including smartphones and laptops that can last the entire day that we enjoy today. The energy density of graphite lithium ion cells has become high enough in the last 10 years that a new market has emerged, that of electric mobility, be it ground, air, water, or underwater. Electric vehicles are already starting to make a dent in the total carbon emissions and will be key to the decarbonization of transportation. Charging in minutes instead of tens of minutes will bring the EV experience closer to that of internal combustion engine cars and further increase the appeal of electric driving. The Amprea Silicon technology is currently focused on a transportation market that has the potential to be even more disruptive at the society level and change the way people move and travel. That is electric flight. Many companies currently developing electric flying machines of a variety of designs with wings, with multi-rotors uh, or combination design, unmanned and manned. For electric flight, energy density is a critical metric because weight has a high cost. The graphite lithium ion technology, even after years of improvements, is not reaching the levels of power and energy needed for electric flight beyond demonstrations and limited use cases. Silicon nanowire batteries typically double the flight time and range of graphite batteries and with extreme fast charge capability allow fast turnaround for the next flight, a key advantage in these market applications. Our customers have already confirmed and validated this performance in real world applications. So let's see here, we are uh, now at about 70% charge in uh, under five minutes, 4.4 uh, minutes. And uh, we can see that uh, the cell has transitioned into a constant voltage mode. It's charging at 4.35 volt and the current uh, starting dropping. 
the temperature is uh, in the 50 degree, 55 or so, and it's uh, also dropping. So, uh, to repeat, this is a uh, is not an actively uh, temperature control cell. It's a passive uh, environment in a controlled environment or in, a, in an active temperature control mode. This cell will be capable of even faster charging uh, if the temperature is maintained in a narrower band. So. We're approaching now 80% in under six minutes. Um, this, is a, this is an extraordinary achievement. Uh, it's a remarkable result that uh, uh, will be highly desirable in a, in a lot of uh, electric mobility applications. For the future of electric mobility, this is a really big deal. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Ianel. We will now take your questions. As a reminder, you may submit your questions in writing in the Q&A section. We'll pause a moment to gather today's questions. Now, our first question is for Ianel. What is the current or projected energy density in watt hours per kilogram, specifically for passenger eVTOL aircraft? And are you planning to use 100% silicon anodes or silicon graphite anodes, anodes for eVTOL applications? So um, as we're um, um, already disclosing um, uh, during our uh, live demo, um, the cell that uh, was tested is 370 watt hour per kilogram. So that's our high power cell and does um, of um, uh, slightly lower uh, specific energy than, uh, than our other uh, cell design. So that's, that's the minimum that we offer. The maximum is 450 watt hour per kilogram at this time. And we have also a balanced platform uh, that still has um, about uh, three to one power to energy ratio around 400 watt hour per kilogram so the 400 and the 370 watt hour per kilogram are the most common platform for ebito applications and they are all silicon 100 percent silicon so we don't plan to use graphite in our cells great thank you uh you know next question is for you how does extreme fast charge affect cycle life so extreme fast charge um, in uh, uh, EVs, for example, uh, is, uh, is preferred only in uh, rare occasions because of uh, danger of lithium plating. Silicon has a higher voltage relative to graphite for, uh, so that it's, it's much more difficult to plate lithium on silicon. And that makes it ideal for fast charge applications. And um, that also uh, means that it's not that much affected for uh, for cycle life in, during fast charging. So very little effect. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more for you, Inel. How does extreme fast charge scale with cell capacity? So the main uh, ingredient for fast charge is the chemistry of the cell, and that's um, uh, our silicon technology. When scaling the cell, uh, the chemistry remains the same. Uh, of course, for larger cells, what needs to be adapted is usually the connections, the wells in time, the cell, so other elements of the cell design that are critical for accepting a high power. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one more for you, Ianel. What's the trade-off between extreme fast charge and energy density? So as I um, already mentioned in the uh, responding first question, uh, there is a trade-off. Uh, fast charge requires uh, the thinnest of uh, electrodes, which means uh, reducing uh, the energy density. However, uh, silicon already has a very high energy density, even in thin electrodes. So the compromise in uh, silicon cells is significantly reduced. So at the highest power level, we're still well above any graphite cell or any uh, other technology. 
Thank you so much. Uh, John, this next question is for you. Are there customers that are currently using Extreme Fast Charge products? Yes, um, Extreme Fast Charge high power cells is a key part of our uh, product portfolio. Uh, specifically, they're used in uh, advanced drones that require high performance for takeoff and long cruise. That's where the energy is very important. And we don't, as you know, indicated, uh, compromise in a significant way energy with high power. Um, and also, of course, when they land and can be recharged uh, with extreme rates, uh, they get back into service. So this is something that our customers are very, very uh, happy with. Thank you, John. Um, one more for ENL. How does environmental temperature affect extreme fast charge? So typically at low temperatures, the power capability of lithium ion cells uh, would decrease. And that's, uh, that's also the case for our cells. However, in a battery, um, typical battery environment, the cell uh, and the batteries are preconditioned to increase the temperature. Um, and uh, due to its higher voltage versus uh, lithium plating, even at low temperature, the power delta uh, versus graphite remains. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, next one is for you again, Ianel. Are there other technologies that have similar or better extreme fast charge solutions? So the, the competing technologies currently are uh, graphite, uh, silicon, and lithium metal. <clears throat> lithium metal is typically uh, the slowest of the three uh, in charging, and um, silicon has emerged uh, in the last uh, couple of years as the solution for fast charging. Uh, and there are a few companies that are developing cells with fast charge and extreme fast charge capability. They are all silicon. Uh, however, um, there is, as I said previously, there is always a delta between pure silicon and silicon mixed with other materials, inert or, or not inert. Um, and uh, uh, Amplius is the only one that's developing pure silicon cells. That, that means highest energy density for the same power capability or higher power capability. Great, thank you. John, this next question is for you. Is the manufacturing process different for extreme fast charge? That's a great question. Um, I'll preface the answer by saying that our manufacturing process is fully derivative of conventional lithium ion cell manufacturing. The bill of materials other than the anode is derived as well from the global supply chain. Uh, and so we're able to benefit from all the advances over the years that have, uh, uh, that have come into play. Um, but regarding energy versus power, as Yanel already indicated, design changes uh, are sort of focused on one or the other or a balance between them. Uh, the anode is fundamentally the same, however. Uh, so it's a tweak in, for example, cathode loading or the thickness of the cathode and other uh, factors. But essentially, uh, our energy, power, and balance cells are fundamentally the same and manufactured the same. Thank you, John. Um, this next question is for you. Um, is lithium the prime element or are you using something cheaper and more abundant like silicon? We received that from one of the participants. Well, as I hope has been evident from this presentation, uh, we're a silicon, 100% silicon anode. And of course, lithium is present in our cell. It's the active uh, ion, if you like. Um, it is a lithium ion cell. And we replaced a graphite uh, with silicon. Great. Thank you so much. Um, you know, this next question is for you. Does this structure suffer dendrite buildup? No, so that's, uh, that's the main advantage of, uh, of silicon is that um, uh, it has a higher voltage than graphite. Uh, so it's far, uh, a little bit of a margin for dendrite growth. So no, the answer is no. That's what allows us to actually operate it so fast. Great, thank you, Inel. 
Kang, this next question is for you. How will the recent announcement of the DOE award affect Amprius's scale up plans? First, uh, we are very pleased to uh, receive this uh, grant from a DOE. This is the second uh, award, uh, grant award to Amprius this year. Uh, so DOE has been very supportive to Amprius silicon nanowire technology development in many years. This particular grant uh, is a catalyst to our large scale manufacturing scale up. Great. And one more. Um, I guess this one probably is for Kang as well. Will the sil silicate anode be relevant for all EVs or for small vehicles, medium sized vehicles, or other sizes? Yeah, the silicon and uh, yeah, particularly our silicon nanowire technology is a uniquely positioned for electrical mobility. This covers uh, aviation applications, electrical uh, transportation, including the uh, electrical vehicles and the marine vessels. Very interesting. Okay, um, our last question today is um, also for Kang. Have you determined where Amprius's mass production facility will be located? And what is the timeline? Yeah, our side the selection process has reached the advanced stage. Yeah, there are several sites are under review. Uh, we would like to have a set select before end of the year. Okay, thank you so much. Um, at this time, this does conclude our question and answer session. I'd now like to turn the call back over to Kang for his closing remarks. Uh, thanks for participating in uh, today's demo. The extreme fast charge feature is one of the important Amprius uh, silicon nanowire annual battery performance. As we have demonstrated in the commercial market since 2018, the Amprius technology brought lithium-ion battery performance to a new level. Now, our battery's power density, energy density, operating temperature range, also are in leading position and support a critical commercial applications of electrical mobility. Now, we will keep you uh, posted uh, on the progress of our new technology and the product development. And thanks again for joining us today. Thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate all of your questions. If your question was not taken, you may contact Amprius's investor relations team at ir at This concludes today's presentation. Have a nice day.